Welcome back to SNS Grills, everybody. My name is Mike from the Everyday Barbecue YouTube channel, and today I'm going to show you how to smoke a delicious meatloaf out on the Slow and Sear Kettle Grill, and it's coming up right now. Once again, welcome back to the channel, everybody. We really appreciate having you here. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, we kindly invite you to do so by clicking that button down below. I'm gonna have all the notes and all the details for this recipe down in the description box. And without any further ado, let's get into this recipe. So I have a large mixing bowl here with my ground beef already in. To that, we're going to add mild Italian sausage, finely diced onion, fresh chopped garlic, fresh chopped parsley, panko breadcrumbs, and these are Italian flavor, one egg, some nice fresh Parmesan cheese, kosher salt, and black pepper. Now we've got to get this mixed together well, and there's only one way to do it. And there we go, that just took a few minutes. Let's get on to the next step, which is getting this into a loaf pan. So I just have a loaf pan here with some plastic wrap in it, and that's gonna help us get this meatloaf out after we shape it. So we just wanna gently place this in. Now we're just gonna press down lightly. We don't wanna press too hard. All right, we're ready for the next step. Now we flip this over onto a wire rack. and gently remove our plastic wrap. Doing it this way is gonna make it so much easier to transport on and off the grill and in and out of the house during the cook. So now we're gonna get this into the freezer for about 30 minutes just to firm it up a little bit before the cook. And that gives us the perfect amount of time to get our slow and sear kettle set up. So I'll meet you outside. Okay, so let me show you exactly how I have the SNS kettle set up for today's cook. Our target temperatures are gonna be 325 to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. In order to achieve that temperature, you're going to fill your slow and sear halfway with unlit coals. And I have another half a chimney of coals preheating right now, which we're gonna dump on top of that. I do have my water reservoir in place, but we're not gonna be cooking with water today. My drip and griddle pan is in place, which is gonna make cleanup for this cook much easier. And I will be monitoring temperatures today with a remote thermometer, which is running through the pro port of the slow and sear kettle. Okay, our coals are ready to go ahead and pour on top of the unlit coals in the slow and sear. Next, we wanna just spread those out evenly. Now we can get our grate on. Now it's time to get this lid on and let this cooker start to preheat. So at this point, you're opening up your lower and upper vent to get the temperatures to start to come up. Target temps again are 325 to 350 degrees. So once we hit about 275, we'll start choking back and dialing in these vents to get our temperature locked in. Now keep in mind, there's lots of different environmental factors for vent settings, so it may be different for you than it is for me, but here's what my final vent settings look like to get my temperatures locked in. Okay, so 30 minutes has gone by, our cooker's locked into temperature, we're burning some nice, beautiful, clean smoke, and the meatloaf's ready to get on. Now before I put it on, I just wanna hit it up with some rub. I'm going to use our not just for beef rub today, but you can go ahead and use any barbecue rub that you like, whatever your favorite is. In fact, I'll put a recipe for a homemade barbecue rub down in the description for you. The rub's going to add flavor, and it's also going to help us build a nice crust on the outside. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get this meatloaf on. Just one last thing before I get this lid on, I just want to give this a little spritz with water. That added moisture is gonna help the smoke adhere to the meat to build a nice crust and add some beautiful smoke flavor. Now we just need to get a probe into the center of this meatloaf to monitor temperature, get this lid closed, and I'll see you about halfway through when we check on this meatloaf. All right, we're back. It's been about 90 minutes and our meatloaf is sitting at about 115 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature. It's time to have a look at it. All right, so come on, that looks absolutely amazing. Look at that crust on the outside. If you could smell this, I mean, it just smells absolutely incredible. So I am gonna spin this around just to promote even cooking, and I'll bring you back shortly when it's time to put our glaze on. Okay, another 25 minutes has gone by. Meatloaf is at 140 degrees internal temperature. Let's take a look at it. 
This thing looks and smells beautiful. Now we're gonna finish this off with a coat of whatever your favorite barbecue sauce is. We're gonna apply a nice coating to the outside and we'll finish this off to a total of 155 degrees Fahrenheit before we pull it from the cooker. It will rest another five degrees, so our total final cook temperature will be 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we'll get our lid back on. And we're just gonna let this go a little bit longer. I'll bring you back when it's time to pull this from the cooker. We just broke 155 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature for this meatloaf. I did double check it with an Insta Read thermometer. It's now time to pull this meatloaf from the cooker, let it rest just a few minutes, and I will meet you inside when I have it on the cutting board. So we're back inside. We let this rest just a few minutes, and it's time to go ahead and make some slices. This crust is absolutely amazing, and the smell is just glorious. So as I'm cutting through here, I can just hear and feel that crust. Such a key element to a good meatloaf. So this turned out amazing. We've got a beautiful smoke ring here. We've got a crazy good crust. And of course, there's only one thing left to do, right? That crust just looks incredible. Cheers, everybody. Mmm. Amazing smokiness, amazing flavor. All those ingredients are coming through. And that beautiful crust, that barrier to all that flavor, it's just incredible. I mean, it just doesn't get any better than this. So all the ingredients that we use, all the steps we take, they show up in this end result. And this could not have turned out any better. I mean, it is fantastic. So if you like meatloaf, this is when you have got to do at home. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. Remember, till next time, two zones are better than one, and I'll see you on the next video.